So let's start to look how to use the console log in Chart.js and the console log can be very useful for debugging but also understanding how we can get into Chart.js or within certain objects and extract values. So what we're going to do here first of all is we're going to get the default code which you can find on Chart.js3.com getting started. This specific link here which you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here copy the boiler template here. Copy this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste that in there. I'll cut this out and then I will put that in here. So if I save this, refresh, there we are. We have now this. What I want to do here is to maximize this size here. Save that. There we are. All right. So what we're going to do now is the following. So let's play around here with basics items. So first of all, what we need to know is how we open up our developer tab, which is on your windows it's uh, f12 and if you're on a mac it's option command i so there we are here and then make sure you go here on the console tab basically this allows us to show if ever there would be any errors so what i'm going to do here now is um, for example i'm going to say your console log and this show here hello save refresh there we are so this shows everything here so you can imagine with this, first of all, you will get errors here if something doesn't work. So for example, if I would type in here something like bars instead of bar, you will see you get this error of bars here. Although this one is a tricky one because it refers to the chart.js uh, JavaScript library, basically, and not to the error here because it doesn't recognize this variable on its own. And that's why it gives an error within the chart.js library because there it doesn't have that value. Anyway, um, what we can do here, for example, if we want to show certain values here, or you can make a mistake here. So for example, here, uh, we have this item here, and I'll just make this const like that. If I save that, which should not be, as you can see here, this is truly incorrect because we have a double item. You can see here the mistake. So let me zoom in here. And you can see here the mistake, and the mistake indicates already where or which line in the developer tab line 93 and more specifically these days especially if if you have the updated version of 102 or whatever the browser has right now for chrome i think it's 103 or 102 and you can see here character number or column number 21 which is basically the 21st character so we can check this as well as you can see here below character number five and we have to go to character number 21 you can see here column 21 or at least that's what's calculated column 21 which is the constant here which of course should not be shown here but you should you see these uh, warnings here and that helps you to solve issues so another item what I want to do is for example we have this my chart here basically this is our my chart object we can grab this and if I save this now and refresh open up developer tab we get here now basically the entire chart object with everything in here. This here becomes very, very useful for us because we could dive into all those items here. And you might see here, why are these underscored and others are not underscored? Well, what I've understood from one of the uh, Chart.js maintainer, these underscored items, well, sorry, underscored items, are indication that they are probably being removed in the next version. And I'm talk about, not about version 3.9, if this would be 3.8, but I'm referring to version 4, like basically a new, complete new version. So they might be uh, considering to remove these items or to find a better way to code them. So that's very important to understand. So that, so you could use these, but remember, once we have a Chart.js 4, those might be maybe removed. However, for everything within Chart.js 3, it does not matter. You can use them. But it's being recommended not to use these if possible. So that's very important to understand. So what I'm going to do here now is, so let's get, for example, I want to get these values here. Let's say I want to get the labels here from the data. And if we look very deeply or carefully, we can see it's within the constant of my chart. And then we can jump here into the data basically. And we can see the same here. We are right now here, which is basically the chart object. As my chart equals basically this new chart object. 
And then if I scroll down here, you will see here the data. And if I click on this data object, look at this, you can see the data sets. And you can see here all the items which are identical to what we have here above. And let's grab the labels here. And you can see here to get the labels, we go from data, we have data sets, and we have another one. Let's close this. Oh, there we are, data sets. And besides that is the labels array. So let's grab this labels array now. So we want to scroll down here, my chart dot data dot data sets and with the data sets oh sorry let down let me double check instead of data sets i need to go to the labels so i need to skip the data sets let's go to labels save this refresh and now as you can see we're just showing all the values within that item so what i would like to do more is for example i want to go to the data sets and this is important if i save this refresh you get the data set, but you will see here the array number or the index number. So basically we want to pinpoint index zero because we only have one index. And remember in JavaScript, an array always starts with zero base counting. So we're going to say here data sets zero. If I save this, we are now basically deeper into it or immediately within the index zero. And now we can grab, for example, the data here. How do we do that? You can say a dot data save and then we get the full data array you can see here the data array the length and all other options that we have but this is basically the one that matters for us so if i want to get number uh, index number four which equals the value of 12 all we have to do here is to say here data number four save refresh and there we are so this helps us to grab certain values and of course this here helps us also to debug if we have a certain issue. So those are the most important things with the console log. Every time you get an error, you will see the line if there's an error or if sometimes there is an item like it doesn't show. Let's say instead of data, I'm going to put in here datas. If I save this, refresh, you can see here what's going on. First of all, it gives an error. It cannot read an item. More specifically, where's the error on line 98.7 and uh, 47 in, in the column as you can see here so basically it's here where it expects the issue so it could be that this would be the issue that we maybe we don't have any values in there and you can see here what happens now is undefined so with this we can start to check if maybe we have a mistake that we created in the array that the value of the array does not exist which in this case is true because we only have data and not data so if I save this again, refresh, you can see here it works nicely. And that's basically one of the most important items. And it's quite straightforward once you understand these things, how you can run within the uh, array of all these items here in Chart.js. So if you enjoyed this video, there's another video maybe if you want the arrays to be more organized. I'm going to recommend you this video here on how to show arrays organized in the console log in JavaScript.